or something like that. Like, do you see this card I certainly considered uh, in standard and in. Uh, oh, it looks like your game's going up. Oh, but, um, we got a quarterfinal match. But uh, <laughs> so were we... it's. Uh, I was considering in standard just to take people's swords and like rogue or yeah. something. Yeah. Um, it's. It just does. It dies to all removal. Like Island Walk's really good against Islands. Like it just. I don't know. But what about like, I mean, like in Legacy? I in mean, Legacy, like, I'm thinking in Legacy. Um, what is where it's like where you would probably apply it, but like, what are you gonna get? Like someone's jet that they may randomly have? Like, yeah, I don't know. I, I, like, no, it doesn't seem like there are enough good targets for it. it does, exactly. Yeah. In some of the yeah. more popular decks. Get the candelabra Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but huh? um. Somebody's playing a nice game. Huh. Well, that's interesting. So what is he? Huh. What okay, so now we've got uh, we've got green white against uh, <laughs> against Naya. Did you want to hop back in here? Yeah, hop, hop on back in. Okay. Well, guys, uh, I'll see you around. Yep. I'll see you tomorrow morning. Yeah, see you tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Don't forget your jacket. Yeah, we'll uh, see you when we uh, I guess get camera featured in like round six. Again. Respect. All right, well, <laughs> thank you. Thank uh, you. For as joining. a fun fact for you guys, I'm going to be playing the draft open tomorrow as well as the legacy tournament. Wow. Are you? Yes. Wow, that's great. Just do you it. guys know that. So sweet. Keep an eye on me wow. in both tournaments. I'm pulling the uh, Reed Solo. <laughs> He's wow. pulling a Reed Solo. Alex Burton Sheeny playing two tournaments tomorrow. So meanwhile, uh, <laughs> welcome to the quarterfinals of the Star City Games. Open series here in Dallas, Fort Worth. Uh, we're this is pretty awesome. I'm Gavin Verhey. I'm with Big Head Joe, and What's we're up? watching finally something pretty unique that is not Cobbled. <laughs> I've seen Cobbled all day. <laughs> On your left, Ryan O'Connor. We featured him a couple times today. He's playing a Naya deck. Um, he says Fauna Shaman, uh, Vengevine, Squadron Hawk, Stoneforge Mystic, nine bullet one ofs. He's got Sunblast, Angel, Hero of Oxid Ridge. All kinds of cool stuff going on. He brewed it up with AJ Soccer on the way down here on a drive and barely play tested it, and here he is in the top eight, so might be a good time for it. On the right, Zach Krizan, who's playing a green-white aggro deck, so kind of similar to Jumanji, which we saw in Edison. Um, looks like some quick uh, quick ramp. Got uh, Fauna Shamans and Venge Vines. I don't know if he's got to uh, lead the Stampede and Overwhelming Stampede. We don't have the deck list in front of us yet, but it should be fun to watch it out. Finally, Two decks that are not Cobblade. Although we do have the Call and the Blade on uh, Ryan's side, and most likely on Zach's side as well. Huh. Uh, yes, I would not be surprised. So uh, yeah, on Ryan's side, currently we've got a Squadron Hawk, a uh, Cunning Spark Mage of Birds of Paradise, and a Stoneforge Mystic. On Zach's side, even all in quotes we have is a uh, Fauna Shaman. <laughs> yeah, that, that can turn into just about anything in Zach's deck. Yes, especially uh, in a deck with white, so we can Squadron Hawk it up. Sure can. It looks like... No, he didn't. Okay. So he's going to uh, ditch a Nest Invader. And he's uh, with the Fauna Shaman. And he's going for a Stoneforge Mystic. Or at least he's considering a Stoneforge Mystic. Oh, and he cast the Stoneforge. That's right. He searched up the Stoneforge, cast it, and then searched up Mortar Pod with the Stoneforge. He was just tapping all his mana real fast. He knew what he wanted. All right. Cool. Moving on. So Ryan uh, untaps. <coughs> Pardon me. Look at this water here and drops an arid mesa down. Equip plays and equips the collar oh, and takes out Fauna Shaman. That is just, uh, that's what Ryan Connor needed. Uh, Cunning Spark Mage Caller is absolutely dominating these kind of creature matchups. Yeah, it's one advantage that Ryan has over Zach by yeah, I mean, red as well. It's almost like Ryan is playing a deck very similar to Zach's, except Ryan has the red edge, giving him cards like Inferno Titan, access to Lightning Bolt after sideboarding, um, you know, and of course Cunning Spark Mage Basilisk Caller. Grabs a Plains and he's going to tap for another Squadron Hawk. Uh, yeah, it's actually really interesting. It's almost like a mirror match in a sense, only Ryan's is, is red. It's like Cobblade, one of, one of them splashing red, except finally there's no blue involved. There's green involved right. instead. Okay, so Zach drops the mortar pod and then... Dropped Ryan's uh, cunning spark mage. 
with the germ. Who was saying, just let me die. Orion is going to play another Stoneforge Mystic. And he's going to grab his Sword of Feast and oh, Famine. Man, Stoneforge Mystic's all over the place. Players in the Legacy Open, if you finished with two wins or higher, please Looks report like to the side of end stage to receive your prize. And here comes another Hawk on Again, Ryan's Legacy side. players, if you had two wins or more, please report to the side of end stage. Your prize came up. In with a couple Hawks there, and he passes back. Zach has a stirring Wildwood out. Definitely could be relevant against the Hawks unless they're equipped, but... That appears to be a Razor Verge Thicket that he just played. Yeah, Razor Verge Thicket down. Players are... Uh, it's, it's interesting, Ryan's got quite the board presence here, and definitely a dominating board presence, but... Still, now that that mortar pod came down, yeah, Zach's uh, got some game, and yeah, I sure mean, does. Look, he's <laughs> but amazing. How just like that adds two more creatures to the board. Down comes Hawk Hawk, and a Fauna Shaman's ready to start searching up things next turn. We might see some uh, Vengevine action soon. Looks like Ryan's got <laughs> a couple of Vengevines. Yeah, in his looks hands looking like up. it. Still, uh, it's interesting. They have a lot of creatures in play, but life totals haven't changed too much. 20 on Ryan's side, 16 on Zach's side. I think Ryan's probably looking for an opportunity to sneak that sort of decent famine in. But Squadron Hawk makes for a nice little blocker. Down comes Fauna Shaman. So that'll... Uh, That'll get rid of those Venge Vines in his hand, that's for well, sure. Well, not only that, but it'll allow Ryan to find a second copy of Cunning Spark Mage to reset Spark Mage. There you go, it. yep. Now, granted, Mortar Pod on Zach's side will be able to deal with future Spark Mage callers, but... But given the haste, he'll be able to get a little damage, you know, he'll get, be able to get a little action in before... Uh, before that happens. Likely, unless the Mortar Pod is already equipped. So, it, it, interestingly, Ryan casts Fauna Shaman pre-combat, letting uh, Zach see what's going on before he chooses to block. Down comes another land for Zach. So clogged up board here. Yeah, this green white gets clogged up a little bit. There's, and the sword hasn't quite come down yet, though we, we might see it enter soon. I'd imagine end step Stoneforge Mystic is going to bring sword into the fray. And again, right now he has, you know, he has the, uh, of course, again he has sword, stirring Wildwood. So if the Stoneforge, I mean, uh, even I mean Zach has Squadron Hawk to block a sword too. Yeah. Oh yeah. But he can start taking out the ones that aren't. You know, he can't equip all of them. He can't equip all the Squadron Hawks with uh, with swords. So, Stirring Wildwood will eventually start taking them all. Start taking out the other ones. Well, except Stirring Wildwood is green when it becomes a. a but I'm saying with. the ones that aren't equipped. Like I said, he can't right. equip them all. With right, right, right. Yeah, you just ship a sword to one. We probably have to just start serving with that one. So, uh, he's equips Mortar Pod. A couple times, I think. Yep, and it shoots off. He killed that Fauna Shaman. That's what happened. Traded both yeah. his Hawks for a Fauna Shaman. And Ryan's like, that's fine with me. I'll uh, happily get the Sword of Feast and Famine online. Okay. Sylvan Ranger there. <laughs> Man, Ryan, the one of Sylvan Ranger uh, as a tutor target, as a way to fix the Ryan's mana. And he's drawn that one quite a bit. And he said it's been great for him all day. He really likes the one Sylvan Ranger and would not cut it in his deck. So we had him in here earlier and we're talking to him. He's been very happy with it. I mean, it's kind of like, kind of like prophetic prism in a way in some decks, you know. It's kind of 
make sure you have that uh, that second source of whatever color you might be missing. Right, and it puts you up a land too, and it discards the Fauna Shaman, carries a sword of peace and famine. Yeah. It's a pretty awesome, all the things it does. Just trying to make sure you got the mana count right here. Yeah. And so, it's like that, that birdie's gonna come in, yep, it comes Sword of Feast and Famine, it's going to untap all of his lands, every single one. Allow him to do even more shenanigans. Oh. So he discards, get Zach discards Garrick Wildspeaker. And uh, Ryan gets to untap. Plays a Vengevine post combat. Post combat, Vengevine. When you, get it, when you can get it in there, you can get yeah. it in there, I suppose. Absolutely. We still got our red up, at least representing Bolt or something to that effect. Yeah. Now, we know Ryan doesn't have any Bolts in his main deck, but he is still representing it, which is all that matters sometimes. Got a bit of a <laughs> we got a crowd there. It's kind of bumping the camera a bit. All right, so Zach picks up his card. All right, so how do you think Zach's going to be able to get back in this game? Now, once again, we don't know his exact deck list. But Seems pretty rough for him right now, yeah, honestly. I mean, it's a rough position. What do you think you'll find with that uh, <coughs> Fauna Shaman? I mean, it's Ryan has quite the dominating board position. He's sitting at only eight life. <laughs> Sunblast Angel would be good for him right now, but I don't know if uh, Zach uh, runs it. Bane Slayer well, could bring oh, him right back into it. There's the other one. Bane Slayer is a good, good angel to have on your side. And he did not need to search it up either. Yep, and leaves up the green so he can still tutor up a harm necessary. So, I mean, so Bane Slayer Angel is going to do a pretty good job of shutting off Ryan's offense, right? Because the sword, even if equipped to Vengevine, still falls to Bane Slayer. And Zach uh, goes hawking. Or is, is that Stone Forge Mystic or is that Squadron Hawk? Couldn't quite make it. I thought it was a hawk, but. I think it's a hawk. Is he going to fail to find? Oh, there we go. He found one. Alright. Had a little trouble there. So, uh, yeah, here comes a hawk in, uh, into Zach's hand. And then it's probably just going to be passing the turn, I'd imagine. Legacy Challenge players, if you finished with two wins or higher and you have not yet received your prize, please report to the side events area. Again, Legacy players, if you have not received your prize, come to the side events area. All right, so Ryan untaps this massive swath of creatures. <laughs> <laughs> that is a mighty, mighty swarm right there. Yes, definitely. And uh, I mean, that Bainslayer Angel, <laughs> despite the numbers <laughs> Ryan has, that Bainslayer Angel is pretty much going to hold him off. Yeah. I mean, I don't think he can attack profitably. <laughs> Granted, I mean, he might be able to deal damage, but I don't know if it'd be worth it to Ryan's yeah, board I mean, position. The, the, I mean, the crackback alone will make up for it, you know, like, he could probably swing in and deal some damage, but when Zach swings back, if he, if he swings back, it'll almost all completely make up for it. Yeah, it's not going to be 13 damage, that's for sure. Right. That, that's the magical number. <laughs> and Ryan's counting just to double check, but, I mean, to be fair, I haven't done the math, but I'm fairly certain that's not enough damage. Yeah, there's no way. Now, we can definitely drop Zach low at the cost of uh, probably a Squadron Hawk or a Bench Ryan. But... Figure out what to do, and that Bane Slayer is pretty good for Zach here. Another yeah. Vengevine. Another Vengevine. He's gonna give Vengevine the Basilisk Collar, and everything serves him. <laughs> He's just gonna do it. He's uh, following the Nike philosophy of life here. That's right. <laughs> well, whatever. Uh, whatever Zach can do back, it's not gonna do 20 to him. So I guess he figures. Right. I mean, Why not? I think I think attacking is still probably right. Sure. I mean, with the second Vengevine especially, you know, that really adds, you know. Yeah. <laughs> adds about four more power. That sounds about <laughs> right. Hmm. 
Well, it seems like, I mean, he equipped the Basilisk collar. It seems like, obviously, he blocks the uh, Vengevine with the collar. Right. I mean, it makes sense. Or, I, think, I think you put the Squadron Hawk in front of the Sorted Squadron Hawk. Baneslayer Angel in front of the Basilisk collar Vengevine. And then Fauna Shaman in front of one of the Stoneforge Mystics. I, I haven't seen how the math adds up, but I think that, that sounds right to me. Yeah, let's... I think that's it. That, that's about what he's, what he's choosing, yeah. Yep, that looks, that looks like... Uh, what's, yep. Yep. There you go. Nailed it. Yep. And Definitely not 13, like you said, but... Uh, yeah, still still going to push Zach down on life overall, but... Sure. Let's see, it looks like 4, 5, 6, 7, 8... I think Zach drops to 4 or 5 here. Let's see. Okay, so Zach drops to five life. And Ryan's just gonna have to pass the turn. Now, it's a little dangerous because now Zach has Fauna Shaman active. A lot of bad things could happen for Ryan, including perhaps a second main slayer angel if there's one in his deck. Is that a green sun zenith in Zach's hand? Yes, it is. He's that, had it in his hand for quite a while now. I've I've been looking at it every turn trying to figure out if that's actually what it is, and uh, my eyes do not deceive me. It's a good card. What do you think that he can Zenith up, up in that deck? I'm sure all kinds of stuff. Um, probably Acidic Slimes. Um, I don't know exactly how good that would be right now. Well, whatever it is, we're going to find out, because I think he just cast it. And... Wait. You can't get Bane Star Angel with the Green Sun Zenith. Oh, wait. No, I mean, no, he fought a Shaman for that. Okay. Okay, I was about to say, like, hold on now. There's one thing we know. Have you been playing that card wrong all day? We were definitely talking about it wrong last weekend. <laughs> it's okay. Everyone's always wanted to uh, grease the Zenith for Grim Lava Man. So <laughs> um, all right, so double band Star Angel is going to be an issue. Yep. Ryan's like, okay, this is looking so good. What happened? <laughs> Ryan needs to find a, uh, uh, a Cutting Spark Mage stat. So Ryan played a Fauna Shaman, and it looks like Zach had to take a big blow by using two creatures to mortar pot away that Fauna Shaman, but wisely, Zach Creason killed off the Fauna Shaman, making sure Ryan couldn't find another Spark Mage. That mortar pot has been awesome for Zach so far. Yeah. As has Baneslayer. Yes. Yes, Baneslayer does some work. Baneslayer's cheaper right now than I think it's ever been, unless it took a little hike. Last I saw it, it was the 12 bucks. That's insane when you think, you know, it's a $50 card just last year. Yeah. It was Jace before there was a Jace here. I'm checking now. I'm curious. My internet died, unfortunately, so I can't check on anything. Mine's definitely sluggish, but, uh... $13 and jumped a dollar. Get your Bane Slayers before they go any higher. Find, uh, with slightly worse condition. Alright. So Ryan's in the tank. And I think at this point Ryan has to play for finding Cutting Spark Ranch. I mean, that Fauna Shaman just to make things worse every turn as more and more threats get added to Zach Creason's board. We don't have Zach's list. Lord knows how many Bane Slayers he has in there. Yeah, I mean, we've already seen two. Might, might just be a full, full quad. See if the lists are up online. That's what I'm checking right now. Jody Keith to the side of his stage. Jody Keith to the side of his stage. Alright, so Ryan suits up, suits up a Venge line with both the collar and the sword. We don't have the lists online yet. They'll be online shortly, I'm sure. And that Vengevine still doesn't kill a Bane Slayer. Yep. <laughs> it definitely doesn't kill two Bane Slayers. No. It is uh, missing some equipment for that purpose. You need a, I don't know, withstand death or something. Or just a white sword. That'd be great, too. But, so that's not the case. Alright, so now we finally see what, what's up with Zenith. Goes for four. Green Sun's for four. Okay, so he cannot... Vengevine is what it looks like. It looked like a Vengevine, yeah. Yep. 
Sounds about right. All right, well, that's kind of a cool interaction. Pay five, get a Vengevine. Just lets you have more Vengevines in your in your deck. Yeah. And we know Zach has at least a couple because uh, I saw another Zenith that's just flipping through his deck. So. And now, obviously, Vengevine not so strong here. Runs right into Equipment Vengevine. All right. and uh, Bigger Vengevine. Zach's like, well, can't attack. I have to hold it back. So Ryan buys a little more time to find Cunning Spark Mage or something else. I'm surprised Zach didn't, doesn't have like a main deck acidic slime to go uh, blow up that equipment. Yeah. Or at least he opted not to if he did. Yep. Hmm. Oh, so he's going to grab up another Vengevine with his Fauna Shaman. Sure. And soon we'll have all the Vengevines. And yep, so that gun taps. And all the players just kind of staring at each other. Ryan's <laughs> really waiting to find a, this cunning spark mage that'll. But even that's not going to do a ton. Because of that mortar pot on Zach's board. Ryan has to find. Ryan really has to find acidic slime for mortar pod and then a cunning spark mage. I think that's his main course here. That, uh, that Fauna Shaman isn't going to make things easy, though. Nope. <coughs> hmm. Bane Slayers are huge right now. There's Bane Slayer. Talk down. Zach's going to go up to 10 life here. Yeah, I figured he might start swinging in with one eventually. Yeah, I mean, I think he's got the board position for it now. And yeah. He, and yeah, he has another bench behind him. Again, he has the, uh, the um, Stirring Wildwood to fend off a little bit of damage there from the uh, right. from the Hawks. or. I mean, yeah, Ryan can't even really attack here unless uh, something goes really in his favor. And here's another Vengevine searched up with the Fauna Shaman. And we're going to you know, Hawk Vengevine, get back the other Vengevine. <laughs> Zach's got quite the defense. Defensive Vengevine. Quite a bit of a stalemate here. Uh, despite the, uh, Ryan, the threat Zach's was putting that a on. Was Shaman Ryan Drew? I think so. I mean, that's that's a great card for him here. But Zach, if he plays correctly, can just mortar pot up a couple things and knock that Shaman out. <coughs> Water pod has just been awesome for Zach this Yeah. Game. It's been so insane. It's just kept Ryan off his whole plan, basically. Right. I mean, at one point, to imagine at one point in this game, Ryan had Spark Mage Caller and a pretty dominating board position, and Water Pod reduced that, and another Fauna Shaman did nothing. He's just slowly eating away Ryan's defenses here with the Bane Slayer, gaining life in the process. Yep. And, uh, yep. and uh, Zach knows what he did. With. Zach knows what he's got to do. Vengevine kills, Vengevine kills, and yep. down goes Fauna Shaman. And he gains life off the mortar pod too, doesn't he? Isn't, isn't it a gain of life too? Uh, it does not gain a life. No? Oh, my fault. It, does, it gives the creature the ability though, so if the creature has life link, he'll gain a life. That's what it was. So if you were to uh, sacrifice the Bane Slayer Angel, and uh, looks like Ryan gets some tokens. I can't quite make out which card. Like Tim Aten. Tim Aten. Uh, Tim is is the man you want uh, when it comes to pro player card tokens. <laughs> Wasn't it one of the best selling cards on uh, StarCityGames.com one week? I think yeah. like AJ went and bought them all. It or something was. Like that. Uh, they sold out. <laughs> Which card was that that Ryan just cast to give him two tokens? Uh, that's a very good question. Can you find that? <coughs> what card did he just cast that got him two tokens? Ryan. Which card did Ryan cast? I can't quite make it out. I feel like it should be obvious, but... Oh, Precursor Golem. Okay, ah, yep, that. okay so yeah. the Golem was hiding there. There you go. So the Golem's out there. It's once again, the players are just building up, up their forces. <laughs> Zach's the only one who's in range to strike. 
right. Mind there's another hawk away to satisfy the Baneslayer hunger. And a green sun the end for four. Give me another revenge mine. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah. You know it. Man, all Venge Vines all the time from Zach Creaston. He must not run the Acidic Slimes main if he hasn't searched them up yet, or maybe he just thinks he can, you know, win a different way. Yeah, I mean, obviously, he seems to want all the Venge Vines, but, I mean, I don't know. I feel like I might have slimed Ryan by now just to make sure that something weird didn't happen with those equipments, but right. if Zach feels pretty safe, he doesn't need to do that. Of course, he could also do it on Precursor Golem, but it wouldn't take out the... Uh, the tokens. Right. Alright, Ryan tapped some mana and cast a card I didn't quite get to see. One, two, three, four, five. Acidic slime? No, he targeted Vengevine. Oh, I thought was. he had targeted the uh, the equipment, but nope. no. And it looks like Vengevine got exiled. What just happened? Once again, off-camera doom. <laughs> I guess Inferno Titan would be pretty awesome for Ryan here. You could ship that to Basil's Collar, too. And just annihilate Zach's board. Yeah, that would be pretty brutal. What did Zach and cast? he does run that. What did Zach cast for five? Yeah, what did Zach cast for five? Zach or Ryan? Oh, sorry, Ryan. Ryan. What, what did Ryan, Ryan cast for five? Okay, it was acidic slime. So it was a slime, yet Vengevine got tossed aside. I'm not sure what happened. Oh, I mean, oh he sacked the Vengevine in response to the Mortar Pod dying. Ah. That makes sense. Deal of damage. Sure. Yeah, I can see that. We just so, saw Vengevine hit the graveyard. Alright, so <laughs> Mortar Pod down. Now Ryan has the opening he needs to play a Fauna Shaman or Cunning Spark Range and start Basilisk collaring the game away. But he has to find one of those two cards. He's already used up. And he's One already of two spark mages and two of his four fauna shamans. He's also out of flyers to block the bane slayers. It's also yeah. important so to know. So now Ryan's suddenly on a very quick clock. Uh, Zach's pretty comfortable with the life total. I think he could probably swing in with both bane slayers here pretty confidently. Yeah, he's going to nope. be conservative. He's only opts for one. I'd probably, I would have probably brought with both there. Just so you could drop Ryan's life total down to 10 and have him dead on the next turn. But yeah, I, I think I would have done that as well. Especially with, I mean, such a comfortable life total. All right, well, all the Venge Vines back. And that seems pretty good. All right, well, let's see what's on Ryan's top of his deck. If it's Fauna Shaman, Zach Creason might be kicking himself. Uh, seven mana. Sunblast Angel. It's gonna kill the one Bane Slayer, so I guess it's probably a good thing he didn't attack with both, right? <laughs> How wise was that? <laughs> and, oh man, Hindsight what a is meeting. 20 20. If he can uh, suit up that Sunblast Angel with the Sword of Feast and Famine, <laughs> which will uh, fend off an unbelievable Sunblast <laughs> Angel. There goes Bane Slayer Angel. And yeah, yep. Ryan is like, yeah, you can have the sword, my uh, sunny friend. Wow. I mean, I guess that's what Zach was playing around was Rip Sunblast Angel. Yeah, uh, I mean, they've seen each other's deck lists at this point, so yeah, he so knows I mean, he's got it. I mean, I would have just went for it, but I guess it's fortunate for Zach Creason that he didn't. <laughs> so now the game is considerably more complex. Where do you even go from here? <laughs> like, if you ride enough time, he's going to be able to find... Fauna Shaman or Cunning Spark Mage. Like it's hard to afford to attack because it's been trying to trade that for Cursor Goal. This is a crazy game. Yeah, it really is. This, is. this has been back and forth. Uh, this is awesome. We thought Ryan was out of it. He hopped right back in. Yeah. There's a Stone Forge. Alright. Ooh, maybe search up the second sword. If he's yep. got it, yep. There's another sword. Thinning our Ryan's deck even further. And adding another sword out there. Another protection from green creature as well. Right, so now, with the thing with the swords is you can put two swords on a Venge Vine, and that does plow past the Bane Slayer. It angel. sure does. And <laughs> it also plows past uh, all the other Venge Vines instead, or on the other side. So, you know, 
pretty soon we could be seeing these ridiculous turns where he's like equip two swords to my Venge Vine, attack you, a free equip sword to Sunblast. <laughs> So, all right. So Ryan uh, gives Man. Angel the collar. I wonder if he's gonna attack with the Angel this turn. I mean, he's gonna, he'll gain the life back. Uh, he'll deal one extra, make Zach discard a card, and untap all of his lands. Yeah. Seems like the right course of action, unless he's worried about something like Condemn. But he's seen the deck list, so he doesn't have to worry about something like that. Right. Really considering it, and it comes down. He took his hand off it, so it counts. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, and in comes Sunblast Angel. A 6-7 lifelinking death touch. You pro black, <laughs> pro green, <laughs> flying. Discard a card, untap all your lands. I feel like Squadron Hawk is going to bite the dust. That seems about right. <laughs> Zach's like, what? What happened? Was a second ago, I was so far ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Where did this Sunblast Angel come from? All right, so Zach opts to just take it. He discards a card, and Ryan untaps all of his lands. He has a lot of life to play with, so it doesn't hurt him so bad yet. But I mean, yeah, but Ryan's now Ryan's gonna, got yeah, he's gonna keep dropping dudes down. There's a Birds of Paradise. Ryan, uh, yep, he's gonna suit suit the uh, <laughs> find up with the collar. And yes, time to use equipment defensively. Look at this mess of creatures. It's just <laughs> absurd. Yeah, for those of you just joining us, I'm Gavin Verhe here with Big Head Joe. Hello. We're watching the quarterfinal matchup with two <laughs> green white base creature decks. You have Ryan O'Connor on the left with this Naya deck. Uh, just green white, uh, Fauna Shaman, Venge <laughs> Vine, uh, Squadron Hawks, Stone Fortune Mystic, and nine bullet one ups to get final with the Fauna Shaman. And you guys didn't want to see uh, Call Blade again. And while we do have the Call and we do have the Blade, we have an incredible match here that is unlike anything we've seen all day. It's true. Zach, Zach Reason, on the other hand, just playing green-white, no red, Bane Slayer Angels, Green Sun Zenith. Apparently, he does not have any Acidic Slimes main deck from what we can gather. Yeah. And, like, the board position, for those who can't quite make it out, on Zach's side, he's got a Bane Slayer Angel, two Fauna Shamans, four Venge Vines, a Stone, and a Squadron Hawk. On Ryan O'Connor's side, he has, a, he has a Sylvan Ranger, a Sunblast Angel, a Venge Vine equipped with a Basilisk Collar, a Sword of Feast and Famine, a Stone Forge Mystic, a Birds of Paradise, a per Perser Golem with two tokens equipped with a Sword of Feast and Famine, a Stone Forge Mystic, and what's the green card all the way to the right? Uh, Acidic Slime? Oh, and Acidic Slime, yes. And when Vala Keeper of Silence off the top of Ryan O'Connor, We'll shut off Zach's uh, Fauna Shamans. This board state is just unbelievable. Like, you feel like it's Christmas, and like you, you open up a box, and there's like another box inside, and you just keep opening. There are all these boxes, and you never know what's going to happen. It's so absurd. All right, so yeah, Sunblast Angel gets in. Zach at one point was at four or five life. Like Ryan had a Cunning Spark Mage with a Basilisk Caller, and then Zach mortar potted it, and then Zach played Bane Star Angel, and just get back in the game. It's just been back and forth, I'd say for at least 20 minutes, half an hour now. Yeah. It's insane. What a crazy match. It looked yeah. like Ryan was dead at so many points, too. And I feel like if Zach had been playing more aggressively with his Bane Slayer Angels, he might have been able to kill Ryan. But Zach played really defensively, and that cost him as Ryan drew Sunblast Angel and finished off one Bane Slayer and allowed it to pick up all the equipment it needed. I mean, and at this point, uh, Lin is equipped, and Lin is a 5-6. Yep. <laughs> so Lin is going to eat Bane Slayer, too. Yeah. And just Zach can't properly attack here. You can just keep equipping, re-equipping, just going back and forth with the Sunblast and Lin Vala. Now it's <laughs> Zach that needs the Haymaker. He needs to draw another Bane Slayer Angel, pretty much. But I, I'm guessing by the fact that he hasn't fought a Shaman for a second Bane Slayer Angel, that he only has two in his main deck. That, that would be my guess. Once and, again, we don't have the deck list in front of us. And we haven't seen an Acidic Slime from him either, which makes us assume that he doesn't have any in his main deck. Yeah, which is surprising to me, because it seems like if you're going to play a tutor, like a you know a, a toolbox engine, you would want one Acidic Slime to deal with all the uh, swords out there. Yeah, and agreed. Stuff, but Zach clearly opted not for one. All right, Zach packs him up. Wow. In a crazy first game. <laughs> wow. He's like, he just looks over, he's like, all right. You got me. I have all my Venge Vines in play. I use both my Bane Slayer Angels. I don't know what more I'm going to be able to do. And Ryan O'Connor takes the first game. And look at him. He's, he's kind of in disbelief. He's a little stunned. His goofy hair is 
is a, like bouncing around all around him. Ryan, Ryan O'Connor, the, the goofy haired one. Yeah, see? There you go. He's, that's uh that is that's Ryan O'Connor I know and love. Ryan is a Midwestern player, really cool guy. And uh, now that, that first game is finally over, it's time to give away three months of SCG Premium. So ready your Twitter accounts, get your hashtag SCG Premium ready, and here's the question. We're gonna be tweeting here in a second, but for all you out there, here's the question we're gonna be asking. Ninth place player, there's a deck that we wanted to see, but we didn't get to see it. What was the ninth place player in this tournament playing that didn't make top eight? Ninth place. We've talked about this a lot in the past couple hours. Uh, what deck was he playing? Or what deck do we believe he's playing anyway? Right. We never saw his deck list. So tweet us, tweet at us with the hashtag, once again, hashtag, which is number sign, SCG Premium. And uh, we'll randomly select one person out of everybody who gives the correct answer, and they'll win three months of premium, which is pretty awesome. Three months of premium. Notice how Ryan O'Connor switched into a Star City game shirt uh, from earlier, which means I think we'll uh, probably be seeing a tournament report from him. I wouldn't be too surprised, which is great, because Ryan's an awesome guy, and I would love to read some of his writing. And if it's on premium, you're going to want to have uh, your premium account to check it out. So uh, <laughs> Ryan, clearly pretty happy. Uh, yeah. Uh, did we uh, tweet the question? I did, but I tweeted it using the wrong. Uh, I didn't use SCG DFW. That was my bad. I oh no! It. I got it. Gotta use the SCG DFW. I used hashtag. SCG Live hashtag by accident. I mean, SCG Live is awesome. Don't get me wrong. There we go. Yeah. Well, use the SCG Premium hashtag also. And if you're going to ask too? us a question, now is a really bad time for it because in the next five minutes we're going to get a flood of uh, other questions. <laughs> Can I get the passcode to try like that? Uh, so, look, players shuffling up. And while they're shuffling up, you have a chance to win SCG Premium. So once again, answer the question, what deck was the ninth place player in this tournament playing? It's a deck we wanted to see. We never got to see it under the camera. What was he playing? Tweeted from the right account this time. There we go. Third time's a charm. <laughs> <coughs> hmm? First I tweeted it with the wrong hashtag. Then I tweeted it from my personal Twitter. Well, yeah. now I finally got it right. Covered, covered all the bases. <laughs> if, uh, if my internet were working, we're working on getting my internet back online, but if it were working, I would show you. And that's just kind of the story of the day is the internet problem. We apologize. We had some technical issues earlier in the day, but things knocking on the table here are finally starting to get a little better underway. We, we fixed the nine-minute delay in the feed. <laughs> we, uh, we fixed some of the lighting issues, and hopefully you guys are able to see this match much more crisper and clear try at using, home. Try using this code. All right. That's the one I used earlier. That's the, the the ID ends with that, and then that's the code. Try okay, that. sweet. Let's see if that works. Pass that to Rashad. And so, uh, so what do you think is happening here? We don't have the deck lists, but in this matchup, who do you think is the favorite? Do you think it's Ryan because he has the red, or do you think his axe ability to green sun zenith is going to be uh, key for him? I mean, that's obviously. Uh, I mean, it's a really strong card. I mean, it's being it's it's seeing play as a four of in some legacy decks, which you know. Is a testament to its power, um, but uh, I mean, I feel like Ryan does have an advantage because of the red. Um, he has access to removal that uh, that Zach just doesn't have. Although, no, I just um, want to count the cards. I mean, they can both. I mean, that's the thing. Like, they can both do a lot of the same things. Um, I think Ryan's advantage is that he has the red and he has some blast angel. Okay, I'll just recount. Honestly. Yeah, the, the th that Sunblast Angel seemed awesome. Now, granted, Winston, we don't have his axe to deck list, but if he has uh, Linvala or something, that could be a total breaker in the matchup, too. True. Um, we can shut off the Spark Mages. We shut off Spark Mage, off Fauna Shaman, Shaman, and he can't tutor things up anymore. Now, granted, if Ryan just naturally draws the Sunblast Angel again, that'll right, uh, work out pretty well. That's uh, what first game, so. Yeah, I mean, I really feel like, like Zach could have played a little more aggressively either Several turns where he was sitting on 15 or 20 life with a full spot of Venge Vines and just didn't attack with both Bane Slayer Angels. Um, but we'll see what happens.
it's uh, we, we've seen people talk recently about even the control decks or mid-range decks have to just be aggressive when they have the opportunity, and that was maybe a missed one. But uh, Ryan was able to, in a long, arduous first game, Ryan was able to pick that one up. And now we're going heading into game two here at the Star City Games Open Series here in uh, Dallas-Fort Worth. It's been an awesome day, nine rounds of magic, and now headed in the quarterfinals. Interesting top eight, some cool decks in the top eight, Mono Red Goblins in the top eight, Green White in the top eight, Nye in the top eight. I think we might be seeing, finally seeing a resurgence of Vengevine decks. I think that this might be it. Maybe uh, Vengevine is the answer. Can you see that? That's my Twitter picture. Zach Galifianakis, it's the actual shirt he was wearing when his stand up. We just superimposed this. <laughs> <laughs> Too perfect. Uh, someone was making a, compar a comparison earlier to uh, Big Head Joe with Zach Galifianakis. And, and the whole time, I don't think what Aaron Forsyth was unaware of is that my. Twitter profile picture is actually Zach Galifianakis from his Comedy Central Presents wearing a shirt color the exact same color as the SCG Live shirts and we had superimposed the uh, SCG Live logo on it. Good times. So, uh, so yeah, players off the races. I'm going to hop out for a second, see if we can finally take a peek at these deck lists so we can figure out exactly oh, yeah. what great idea <laughs> with these players. See if you can grab the top eight and see if you can grab that mono red list while you're at it. That'd be great. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so we're getting shuffled up here for game two. And if you're just joining us, I'm Big Head Joe. Gavin Verhey stepped out. We are watching the quarterfinals of the DF Dub Standard Open Series here, presented by StarCityGames.com, of course. We wouldn't have it any other way. Uh, we've got Ryan O'Connor playing a Naya Vengevine list and Zach Prislin, or Krizen, sorry. Uh, playing a green-white, uh, seeming like a Vengevine sort of Jumanji list. Um, we're getting the lists now to confirm. Um, now, I mean, it really seems like Ryan might have an advantage here because he has uh, the red splash, which gives him access to things like the Cunning Spark Mage collar combo, um, and also has Sunblast Angel that he can tutor up with the uh, Fauna Shaman. And the two, the <laughs> Sunblast Angel wound up being huge in game one. So Zach starts off with a uh, Stirring Wildwood, and Ryan follows up with a Copper Line Gorge and a Basilisk Collar. So I finally got my hands on this, uh, this green-white deck list. He's called it Green-White Zenith, and it's got Birds of Paradise, Little War Elves, Squadron Hawk, Nest Invader, Fauna Shaman, Vengevine, Garrick Wildspeaker, Green Sun Zenith, Bane Slayer Angel, Stoneforge Mystic, Mortar Pod, and Journey to Nowhere. It has no swords in the main deck, it just has one Stoneforge Mystic and one Mortar Pod to go huh. find. Um, in, the, wow. in the sideboard, he has Eldrazi Monument, two more Bane Slayers, Lenin Arbiter, Condemn, Silvok Replica, Viridian Corruptor, and Obstinate Bailoth. Those monuments might be awesome in this Whoa. matchup. Oh, that's incredible. And he, he did play a Nest Invader on turn two. I don't know what that token is, but it's pretty awesome. It is pretty sweet. It's a Power Ranger. It's a green Power Ranger. Oh, I thought it was some. Oh, never mind. That's that not cool anymore. That is awesome. I thought it was like a really artsy piece with like, <laughs> like terrain and like a green little, like robot on top of the like futuristic terrain. Well, I think it's cool as the green Power Ranger. <laughs> well, there you go. Tommy, I think was his name. Tommy the Green Ranger. Oh. Um, of course. Uh, <laughs> One of the judges came by and said he doesn't know what's worse, that, uh, that I'm right or that I even know that. So but uh, he knows that I'm right. So, so Zach definitely got some good ammo with Eldrazi Monument, but uh, Ryan picked up two more Cunning Spark Mages on another Basilisk Collar, which is going to make life for Zach pretty rough. Mm -hmm. uh, meanwhile, back in the game, Zach's got a board of Nest Invader, Green Power Ranger Token, a.k.a. Zero One Eldrazi Spawn, and... And... Uh, mortar pod. Mortar pod. <laughs> and uh, Ryan has Sword of Feast and Famine, Basilisk Collar, and Squadron Hawk. <laughs> what did I say that's so funny? I don't get it. I, the, you just said Green Power Ranger token. I don't know. It was just really funny. I don't know. <laughs> green Power Ranger token? Yeah. No, it was I mean, just funny. It, it's, a, <laughs> it's really good in the metagame right now. So Hawk gets uh, sorted up. Right now, it's all about the uh, white and blue Power Rangers. So that's Power true. Ranger. Good times. Uh, let's see. So yeah, it swords up that hawk, which is going to deal some damage. But the mortar pod, once again by Zach. Man, that mortar pod has just been working wonders mm -hmm. for Zach Creason. 
I mean, that's, that's all he has. Like, no other equipments, just that mortar pod. Top 16 deck lists have come up. Excellent. So now you can check out all the deck lists. Now that we finally got the deck list in front of us, you can check out all the top 16 deck lists on the website, including uh, the ninth place deck list that we were talking about earlier. Uh, let's see, Bane Slurgeon comes down for Zach. That's a rough one. But uh, Brian O'Connor tries to stem the tide. He brings out Birds of Paradise and another Squadron Hawk. How did he cast Bane Slayer? <laughs> and in crashes Ryan. He's attacked with his old Drazi spawn token. That is an Eldrazi spawn token, right? I'm pretty sure it is. Oh, oh okay. He goes to six. How does he have Bane Slayer out? That's what I want to know. He has four lands. Brian goes down to six. He didn't sacrifice the spawn. Unless he... I don't know. But how did he cast that Bane Slayer, Angel? We must not be seeing something, right? Obviously. I don't think Ryan would just let him cast... Bane Slayer's for three mana. Bane Slayer Angel for three mana. There, we must be missing something off screen right now. Rashad, can you find out how he's casting those Bane Slayer Angels? Like, so there's gotta be something off screen. He's cast two in a row now. Alright, well, there's a Spark Mage Caller active. Oh, okay. Oh. There's Garrick on the side. Okay, that makes a lot of sense yeah. now. That's a I very mean, good way to like cast Like I said, him. I assume that he was not just uh, playing Bane Slayers for three mana, but... <laughs> All right, and... Yep. Okay, yeah. now he's... Yeah. <laughs> and Zach overruns. That's going to be quite oh a bit goodness. of damage. Okay, and so we think that's a beast token, not an Eldrazi spawn token. Okay. That would make sense why Ryan attacked with it. Oh, he, I, okay. All right, well. Because before exactly. I was like, I don't see Windbrisk Heights anywhere. I, I did don't see think him pick right. it up and kind of point with it, so he must have sat it for mana to cast the Garrick and then used it to bring it right back. Sure. That's what happened. We just totally blanked on that because we yeah, did not the see the Garrick. Garrick just vanished. Yeah. So here we go. We're going to game three. It was yeah. a very quick game two uh, compared to game one, yeah. which was a, a total stalemate. Yeah. I mean, despite Ryan assembling that collar, a spark page at the end, it just didn't matter versus that Garrick wild speaker. <laughs> nope. Uh, Overrun is a powerful effect. Absolutely. So for the record, um, the mono red control deck runs zero because the whole tire was eclipsed. But it is a mono red control deck. It is mono red control. That's right. And uh, for those of you who uh, were tweeted to our question, that was the answer. Mono red control. Uh, <laughs> nope. The contest isn't over, but there's a hint. So, There's a hint. Hey, you can still enter. He just kind of cheated the answer like Flores did that one time when he tweeted from his 10,000 followers. He just kind of tweeted the answer right away. And then everybody, he was like, uh, that's what happened. Um, Fabiano was in the booth with us and asked a nearly impossible question. And Flores, within five seconds, just tweets it. What was the question Fabiano asked? Oh, God, I can't remember. It was like, um... I, I cannot remember, honestly. But it, it was, was like, that who, impossible. It was like, huh? which player finished ninth after uh, winning his winning in at like a Pro Tour or something like that? And it was just like absolutely impossible. I can barely remember the answer. But Flores knew, clearly. Flores knew it immediately, and then everyone knew, of course. <laughs> because sure. everyone follows Flores. It's like everyone loves Raymond, but it's uh, our magic version. <laughs> I mean, I know a couple people who don't follow Mike, but uh, I agree. I think but everyone loves Mike. Most people, uh, most people follow him. Oh man, so now Ryan's going to play this game. That puts him in the advantageous position, I think. Ryan can just make so many good starts with uh, Zach's deck having four birds, three Little War Elves. Having turn one birds, turn two Cunning Spark Mage is just going to be unbelievably powerful for Ryan if he ever gets that online. Cunning Spark Mage just seems so insane in this matchup. Like, not only is it good with Caller, it's just good. Like, no, Zach's the one with the with the land war elves. Right, th th that's what I'm saying. Like if uh, like he has four birds, three little war elves. So if uh, Ryan oh, gets oh, Spark Mage online, like he 
they'll kill. There's a good chance they'll have an one one that's for Zach to kill. Absolutely. Which is. I thought you were saying he was going to accelerate into it with the elves and birds, but no, I mean he's got his own birds to accelerate right. into it. It's true. But not one of Alright. No, not not Lenor Elves. He's got his own birds to use to his advantage. Let's uh Alright, let's see how this one goes. A lot of mono red decks in the top sixteen. Yeah, I mean mono red seemed to sneak up kind of. It didn't look too too popular at the beginning of the day, but it really, really rose to the top here. From what I've been hearing it's a uh here in Texas, it's a very popular choice. Ah. Yeah, I, I've, I've heard similar things, so I wasn't too surprised to see that. Yeah. Um, so let's see, interesting top eight. So there's one, two, three, four, five, five Cobblade decks in the top eight. Goblins, and I Avenge Mine, and Green White. Yeah, if you count all the other decks, there's really seven. <laughs> like if you count these two decks? Right, as uh, decks with Stoneforge Mystic and Yeah, these, I mean, these are running the whole combo. Although, I mean, obviously, um, well, the green white isn't running the blade part. No, so, yeah, there are no Stoneforge, there's no, uh, sorry. Like, I don't think you really count the green white deck. Like, it has no, a Stoneforge Mystic and a Mortar Pot. We, 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 we can probably say you can count the. Uh... Yeah, I mean, <laughs> debatably, <coughs> Ryan O'Connor's deck is cobbled with green, right? Yeah, basically. Like, <laughs> it's uh, Spark Blades uh, without the blue. Plus the grain. <laughs> yeah. It's like Nature Blade. <laughs> nature Blade. Nature Blade. It's, I don't know, like Thorny Rose or something like that. It's a Nature Blade. Nature Boy Ric Flair. Ooh. I wish I, like, or Nettle. I don't know. Like, there's this, this grass near my house that, like, looks really innocuous, but if you, like, try and pick it up, your hands will start to bleed because it's that sharp. I, if I knew what that was called, I would, uh, I would call Ryan's deck that. But I don't. Maybe someone out there on Twitter knows if you're a botanist. Are there any uh, magic players who are good with uh, their botany? Let us know what it is. In the meantime, uh, in, in unbotanical related news, <laughs> uh, Zach and Ryan shuffling up, getting ready for the third game. Ryan's going to be on the play this one with his Naya deck. Well, the, I mean, these cards were all trees at one point. It's true. <laughs> Poor trees. Poor trees sacrificing themselves so we can watch a game of Magic the Gathering take place for our amusement. <laughs> Wouldn't have it any other way. Absolutely so, not. All right, Ryan opens his hand. I saw a lot of lands. Looks like two, one or two Venge Vines. A Cunning Spark Mage is there, though. That is the card. I, if there's, I think Ryan might just keep based on that alone. Yep, and Ryan keeps. Zach sends back to Paris, and not the good way. So now we might we might want to start uh, since the place is kind of emptying out. We might want to stop referring to cards in people's hands. Yeah, I, I think we're. I was actually just thinking that myself. Yeah, I, I just like looked up and just saw nobody. Yeah, <laughs> it's like where did all the people on the tables go? Where have all the cowboys gone? That was yeah. a great song. I don't know. I'm the only one. I don't know where all the cowboys went. Did you eat them? Yeah, they're in my beard somewhere. Just hidden, hidden along uh, long lost crumbs. And, Small birds. Um, Somebody on Twitter last week actually suggested that Billy Moreno was in my beard. Billy Moreno, I think he was here this weekend. Was he? No, see, see, I think he should. I don't think he was actually here. I just thought he was going to be here. Yeah. I didn't see him though. I think he would have said hi. Billy, Billy's an awesome guy. Yeah, Billy's great. Love him. I mean, I, I love me some Moreno. I just couldn't help but laugh at that suggestion. <laughs> I mean, I look like I would live in my was, beard, too. Was he, at a, a recent, was he at a recent Open Series that you were at? Um, I mean, the last time I saw him was actually Grand Prix DC. Oh, I see. I haven't seen him in a while. I mean, he yeah. may have been in other places, but I hadn't really seen him around. Or was he at Nationals? Do you remember if he was at Nationals? I don't think he was at Nationals. <laughs> well, then, no. I don't think he qualified this year. Haven't seen him since DC, then. So, uh, Zach, hoping to find a good six here. Yeah, big deal. He's so good against the Bucks. Shuffling diligently. <laughs> yeah, definitely not good for Zach to have to go to six here, especially with, given what we know is in Ryan's hand. Yeah, seriously. Let's see what Zach finds. <coughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. <laughs> not seven. Fortunately. Easy. All right. Zach's hand looks like 
probably okay. It's a little, little and light. But he's gonna keep it. We got a copper. Uh, no, it's a uh, raging ravine. Raging ravine there. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Raging ravine into a. Uh, Jerry Thompson uh, just picked up his super. match onto the semifinals. Third, uh, third. Uh, so Jerry Thompson will be in the semifinals of this event with his Esper Blade back with no Day of Judgments. <laughs> <laughs> so here comes the, here comes the uh, just like you were saying, here comes the uh, Kenny Spark Mage to start dropping birds. Yep, yep, that's exactly right. It doesn't hurt exactly. He started with two birds, so... Yeah, I mean, uh, that Vengevine still got in with Ryan, mm -hmm. but... And without the collar, it's not going yeah, to do much against the uh, against the Vengevine. But. Uh, it's true. We'll take down that Birds, though, and these Squadron true. Hawks will serve as a pretty nice way to deal with that Vengevine. Now, granted, it's not going to uh, to take down the Vengevine on its own unless he uh, chooses to block with three, but still, I mean, it just delays the damage to a point where Ryan can take control of the game. Mm -hmm. And at some point, like, he'll probably... He'll either take four or block with a hawk this turn, and it's potentially next turn he just goes block with two hawks, ping it with for one with the spark mage. The issue, of course, is you don't want to like spend two hawks and a ping dealing with that vengevine when he because, can just bring it back. Yeah. yeah, he can just bring it back. That is the problem with vengevine. All right. Oh, condemn from Ryan. We were talking to Ryan earlier. He condemned the the, the stirring wildwood too. Ah, interesting. Which is really set him back on mana. Yeah, we were talking to Ryan earlier, and he said that against the beatdown decks, what he does is just turn to a kind of a control deck after sideboard. He gets Gideon Jura mm, condemns, nice, and they don't they, they don't really expect to see it coming, and so he just changes his position. And I don't know uh, what's in his hand, but speaking of Gideon, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw the man himself. He just cracked Aaron Mesa, yeah, dropping just, dropping down to eleven. But this is five mana. That is Gideon Jura range. And, uh, nope. <laughs> just, and I say just in uh, quotation marks, but just a Vengevine. <laughs> and, uh, serves him for five. And this is probably going to take that Vengevine hit here and then unload with Hawks the next turn to just block that Vengevine and force Zach to play that on the defensive. Yeah, and Zach is definitely against the ropes right now, being shut out of three mana sources, uh, so already in the course of this game. Yep, and like I said, those, uh, those kind of spark mages are just so crucial for Ryan here. They will just hamstring Zach's mana development, and they did exactly that. He, Zach still had a reasonable draw with two birds to get that Vengevine out, but Cunning Spark Mage is brutal for these kind of decks. That's a, this, that's exactly why you play the card, is just for purposes like this, where you can just knock off cards like Birds of Paradise, Lynn War Elf, Lotus Cobra. Very brutal. All right, so Zach's like, who's the beatdown, who's the beatdown? Oh, Condemn from Ryan. <laughs> and Zach just pushes it over with the, with the planes. That is not what Zach wanted to see right no. there. Ryan's like, yeah, you could take some life. I'm going to be the beat down this game. And now two Benjamins hiding at the bottom of Zach's deck. Looks like Garrick Wildspeaker. Mm-hmm. And that'll start dropping out blockers, which is pretty good for him. Now, but Ryan can ping the Garrick twice with the Spark Mage finishing it off. So a four mana, three, three isn't that good, and it doesn't even destroy an artifact. Yeah, I mean, at best, it's going to trade with that Vengevine. Oh. oh. I thought I saw him draw it. I didn't want to say anything, but there it was. Basilisk Collar for Ryan. <laughs> That's just what he was looking for. Wow, this seems to be pretty firmly in and, Ryan's. And Zach just yeah, throws yeah, yeah. that like Garrick away. Zach is kind of tossing cards around at this point. Yeah. You can tell he's a little tilted here. Yeah. Looks like Silvac Replica. Tron for Zach. I think we'll see it if you well, drew it. I don't know why I would hold it. That would deal with the uh, the collar, but I mean, we did see Zach come back from a pretty yeah. So I forgot, we see Zach come back from a pretty far behind position before. I'm surprised that he didn't. Uh, I guess it doesn't change anything, yeah. Because if he gets to block the Vengevine, yeah, no, he just does it now. Kills the collar. So yeah, Ryan crashes in for five, just trying to get in as much damage as possible. Oh, that was a very well timed replica, that's for sure. Yeah. I mean, that was just what he was looking for, but Ryan continues to go over the top, and there's Gideon. Not oh, my goodness. Not only an aggro breaker going to be a 6-6 six, six attacking <laughs> next turn. Zach looks, peeks at the one card in his hand. He's like, is it still what I think it is? Oh, my yep. goodness. Oh, man. That is brutal. Like, like Ryan That's said. Zach breaking, yeah. Yeah, it's just, like, Zach, like Ryan said, he just turns into a control deck. The beat down decks are like, I'm just going to play this mid-range game, and he's like, well, I'll just play the control deck. All right. Zach's like, okay, Bane Star Angel, 
And Ryan's like, whatever. I'll probably plus two Gideon. And then, you know. Yeah, plus two Gideon. Let Gideon take the hit and then just minus two it on the next turn. That, so much loyalty on Gideon. I mean, he can also just swing into Gideon. I mean, Baneslayer can't... Uh, yeah, but, can't deal damage to it, so he won't gain life off of that. Right, uh, that's true, but I think it's he probably just wants to get, get that out of the air. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It, seems, it seems a safer play for sure. But like, Zach is pretty far behind. I think if you just make sure he does don't give him any outs, kill off that Bane Slayer Angel, that's yeah. got to be the place you want to be. Now Zach forced to attack into Gideon, and he probably he, Ryan may or may not like he doesn't even have to block with a squadron hawk here. Yeah, absolutely not. Like, unless he's worried about a follow-up Baneslayer Angel or something, in which case he could just block that one. So, yeah, I don't even think he has to block with the Squadron Hawk here. Getting would go down to one loyalty, but... Okay, so Vengevine comes down. Vengevine will probably get blocked by Ryan's Vengevine, I imagine. Also, I can see two Hawks in front of the Vengevine and just ping it off with the Spark Mage. Okay, that's not what he opts to do. All right, so Ryan uses Spark Mage to kill his own... Uh, squadron Hawk to make sure that uh, Zach didn't get any life. A nice, a, really a nice little play there. Yeah, that was a cool little play. Some players might not have seen that. Um, and now Ryan's going to. Uh, oh, yeah, and that, that's lethal right there. Ryan O'Connor takes it down. Good work, Ryan. A pretty wicked beat down there. After it's shutting down the mana sources, you know, uh, yeah, he had the condemns in the right spot. Gideon. Whew, yeah, after a crazy first game, uh, this back and forth, like seriously, that's a game I want. I want to watch again when it goes up in the coverage. Absolutely. After after a crazy first game, we have two more normal games. Zach taking one rather handily, and then Ryan having exactly what he needed in the third game.